Hey everybody, John from the Crafting Brothers here. Do you guys remember a movie called First Night with Richard Gere and Sean Connery? There's a scene in there where Richard Gere jumps up onto the gauntlet and he proceeds to run through this thing with all the sharp blades and knives without any padding or any protection and he actually makes it through and he gets to kiss the queen. We have a special guest this week who volunteered to go through my gauntlet. So we're going to welcome Frankie D. Crafter and he's going to go through my gauntlet to see if he can be as good as Richard Gere. I can't wait to see what happens. Let's check it out. Beat the gauntlet and meet our lovely queen! Not like that, idiot! No! Come and get padded up first! Get down! You're mad! you kill yourself! Sorry about that, Frankie D. I guess you didn't know the gauntlet was over yet. But I know you're a great crafter, and I'm sure you can fix your character. At any rate, I built a gauntlet this week, and I want to show you how I made it. So let's get right to it. We're going to be building this gauntlet primarily with XPS foam, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out my pieces here. I've got about a 6-inch wide piece, and then I'm going to cut that in half. And then I'll make the length of both pieces about 16 inches long. For this project I decided to use my block wall 3D printed roller and that's going to give me a nice castle like brick texture on the wall. Unfortunately no matter how hard I press when I'm using these 3D rollers I still need to go back over this with an X-Acto knife and deepen all of the lines with a pen or a pencil. Using my soldering iron and tinfoil technique, I'm going to create a rough texture on the brick wall. I used to use the tinfoil ball technique where you just roll it over the XPS foam, but I found that this gives a much better texture. And this may seem like a lot of extra work going over the lines with the pen or a pencil, but you really need to do this. I have to admit, I've had a great track record so far of not cutting myself, and then all of a sudden, I did it twice. I burned myself here and then I used this guy to cut my thumb open the other day. So, ugh, so frustrating. But anyways, I got more work to do, so stop the bleeding and keep crafting. I also have to apologize in advance for the disgusting burn mark on the back of my hand. I only realized that I forgot to cover it when I started editing this video, so try not to stare at it. And don't worry, it's not contagious. I figured out a way to get really good wood texture on these XPS foam strips. What you need to do is just take an X-Acto blade and make long shallow cuts along the length of the foam strip and you can even cut out knot holes while you're doing this. After making the cuts just take a wire brush and run it along the length of the foam strip until you get the wood grain you're looking for. After hot gluing the brick wall to the base I'm going to turn my attention now over to the 3D printer where I'm going to print most of the elements I'll need for this gauntlet. Now of course it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your printer or you might find something like this when you come back. Another epic 3D print failure. After reloading my 3D files to the printer I was able to successfully print the weapons needed for the gauntlet. All of the wood strips needed for the gauntlet now are going to get a coat of Mod Podge in black paint and then golden brown over that. I cut these thinner XPS foam strips to be used as wood planks on the top of the gauntlet platform. Now after a coat of golden brown paint, I'm able to cut all of my wood strips to create the gauntlet platform.
I need to build a frame structure over the gauntlet platform, so I'm cutting all the pieces to size, and then I'll glue the frames to the platform. After that, the main structure is ready for a coat of Mod Podge and black paint. I'm going to be making two giant saw blades that will pop out from the brick wall, so I found this thick cardstock to use for that. I'm using metallic metal to paint all of the saw blades and the weapons. After that, I'm going to finish the framework for the rest of the gauntlet platform. Okay, so here are most of my weapons that are going to be a part of the gauntlet here. I went ahead and painted these. I don't really like filming and showing my painting because uh, to me, I, I bore myself when I paint. So just metallic paints here. We've got some brass and some antique gold and uh, just the metallic. I'm using a metallic bronze paint for the chain and spikes of this medieval weapon called a morning star. Then I'm going to paint the rest of the remaining weapons. Okay, I'm ready to cut the hole for my saw blades here. And I think I know approximately where I want them to go. And I need to cut a slit in here about three and a half inches. So I'm going to need to mark that out here. Okay, I'm ready to cut a little jig for my saw blade here. I need to cut something so I can mount this blade onto and have it spin around and come in and out of the wall. So what I need to do is cut about a two inch piece here. And that is going to, two. I need two two inch pieces. And they're gonna go together on the back side of this thing to make this blade work. I figured out a way to make the saw blade work by creating a groove between the two foam pieces which will allow the saw blade to slide back and forth using a dowel through the middle of the saw blade. Okay, so I figured out a way to make my blade swing on a pendulum here. I've got a little piece of straw, which is right here, and it just fits, the straw fits snugly over this dowel here. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing, hot gluing these onto here and then just trimming off the, uh, the tubing. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using popsicle and coffee stirring sticks here to create steps leading up to the gauntlet platform. And as usual, just when I thought I was done, I thought, why not add a few more ways for people to get killed running the gauntlet? To finish all the wood pieces, I'm using a burnt umber acrylic ink, which gives it the perfect wood finish. 
After adding a few more blades, I'm ready to add these impaling swords under the gauntlet platform. So the paint scheme I'm going to use here is going to start with pewter gray and then I'm going to go over it with a light brushing of granite gray and then my wash on top of that. The ground is going to get a coat of PVA glue and then I'm going to spread some brown tile grout over that. I'm going to be making a canopy for the top of this gauntlet and I was experimenting with this a little bit and I actually was able to use two ply toilet paper here and some watered down PVA glue to make this work. So I'm going to use about, I think I'm going to double this up so it's a little bit stronger and I'm going to use some watered down PVA glue here to get this to stick. As you can see it dried nice and firm so now all I need to do is dry brush some light brown and put a brown wash on it. I decided to finish off the canopy top by using these wood shingles I bought at Michael's. Now this gauntlet is ready for final assembly and it's going to be ready for any willing or non-willing challenger to survive the gauntlet obstacle course. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this build of my medieval gauntlet and thanks again to Frankie D who made a valiant effort to run the gauntlet. We'll be back next week. Send me your comments as usual and subscribe. Bye for now.